Hi everybody, welcome to this edition of the Spartan Sports Report here on TV3. Athletic Director at CHS is with us and unfortunately we have to begin this program on a somber note, Brent. Yeah, unfortunately we've uh, had a couple of great losses in the Spartan athletic world in the last seven to eight days. Yes. And unfortunately our uh, head wrestling coach uh, accidentally got killed on New Year's Eve in a terrible tragic accident and then... Uh, Charlie Cox, who, uh, that was Mac Taylor, uh, had been yes. our coach since 2015, 16, and then uh, this past couple days ago, Charlie Cox has driven a lot of our uh, teams to sporting events over the time that I've been involved, uh, uh, passed away. So a uh, couple uh, great losses in the Spartan Athletic World in the last yes. week. So. Mr. Taylor has been since 2015? Yeah, 2015, 2016, you know, he's a graduate of Newcastle High School. And, if you've read anything about him or know anything about him, when he left high school in 96, he had the uh, most records by any high school athlete in wrestling in the nation at 221. I think he finished his career 221 and 8 over that time. So wow. He was doing an excellent job. The wrestlers have really improved since he's come. Yeah, he's I think coach. the kids who are wrestling, uh, we still just don't have enough numbers, and that's mm -hmm. just a matter of getting kids to come out. But uh, the ones that are there that have wrestled for him have definitely improved, and uh, we're off to a pretty good start this year. We've won a few with a small number of kids. They've given up a lot of forfeits and some weight classes because mm -hmm. we just don't, well, for us, we don't have a 106, we don't have a 113, we don't have a 120. So you start out the gate 18-0 now and starting <laughs> out the match, uh, depending on where they start at. But uh, the kids who are involved, you know, if, if you had to describe him, you'd describe him as a milk chocolate M&M, just a, got a little hard, tough shell on the outside, but just a, a big teddy bear on the inside when you listen to him talk to kids about wrestling. So, Kids loved him, is what I understand. Well, you can tell when you talk about people at your awards banquets and you're you know, you on them pretty hard, but yet when you talk about them individually and you got your arm around them and tears are welling up in your eyes, you know there's a different kind of person on the inside. And, and that's what you like about Coach Mack and what he was doing with our kids. So, yeah, Certainly. Uh, our heartfelt condolences to his family and uh, to the Spartan Nation. Yeah, it's a, you know, with his wife and, you know, he's got three kids of his own and she's got the two girls and, you know, it's just a tragic loss for them as well and they're all sure. in a hard place and we keep them in our hearts and our prayers every day, so. Well, it's uh, hard to replace somebody like that. Yeah, and we, you know, we, we're leaving up the kids. They want to go wrestle Wednesday night at Richmond, so mm -hmm. we'll continue on and obviously Mac would have wanted them to go ahead and wrestle, but uh, it's a little hard. Certainly so, is, yes. But, uh, I don't know if you can ever replace him, so you'll just have to figure out what your next move is. And <laughs> uh, Our assistant coach will, will come to practice, and he'll he'll take the reins over for right now. And, you know, it's just as hard on them as it is everybody else as well. So. Certainly. Certainly. Here is the schedule for this week at CHS. Co-ed swimming at Mount Vernon on Monday. Uh, Wednesday, wrestling at Richmond. Lady Spartans basketball with Union County. JV and varsity at Spartan Bowl. Uh, Thursday, the freshman boys and girls basketball home with Batesville. Will that be in the new, new building? Yeah, that'll be in the new building. It'll start at six and the girls will actually play first and the boys will play then right after them. Also, we actually added a girls freshman game tonight at Franklin County. So they're gonna get ready to go down here in a little bit and play down there as well. And EIAC swimming diving only begins and that's where this year? That is at East Central, and unfortunately, that is spectators only. So they'll send out some information here this week. I mean, excuse me, only. excuse me, no spectators, swimmers <laughs> only, and divers. That they'll send some information out where they're going to stream live it, so we can get that information out to our people. Also, Friday, Spartan basketball at Greensburg, JB and Varsity. Uh, what about ticket situation for that? Do you have any information from? Well, Greensburg? you know, for us currently, we're red, so we're two two tickets per person. Uh, I'm not anticipating us going orange by Wednesday, but I don't know that. So as we look ahead, uh, I know for Greensburg, uh, for Union County right now, we're planning on just two tickets per person, not knowing that if we're going to be orange or red. I see. Uh, I think we're leaning in the red category, but I've been wrong before. Talk to Stacy at Greensburg today. Uh, they're allowed 1,000 tickets in, so currently our uh, basketball team is going to get six vouchers per person. And then he said there may or may not be tickets at the or vouchers left over at the door. So come Saturday if you want to try or Friday night if you want to try to get to Greensburg, 
there may be vouchers at the door, kind of like us on those nights. Well, that you we know have, when but, he's going through, don't you? But there, <laughs> they may not be any left. But I know our, each of our kids are going to get six for their families. So, you know, that <clears throat> gives us an opportunity to get about 240 of at least us in there out of those mm -hmm. thousands. So hopefully they'll all get taken out and given to people. Uh, our wrestlers are going uh, Wednesday to Richmond, and they're only allowed two tickets per person. So we're getting ready to hand those to the coach today or tomorrow so they can give them to their, their athletes and then. It's a different world, so. And then Saturday depends on where we're at. Right now we're just planning on two tickets per person for the girls' game in the morning and two tickets per person for the boys' game at night unless we get a different word come Wednesday morning. Yes. So. You won't know until Wednesday morning? Sometimes I get late Tuesday night, just okay. depends. So <laughs> hopefully hopefully the earlier the better, but uh, I would say if we drop from orange to red last week, the chances that we go from red back to orange in less than a week is probably not going to be happy. Unfortunately, Especially with all the holidays. Has, but but you never know. So. Yes. I have to wait and see. On Saturday, they're wrestling at Indianapolis Chittard. And the swimming will continue at East Central. Lady Spartans basketball with New Palestine. Spartan Bull at 11 a.m. and 12.30 for the JV and varsity games. Spartan basketball with Newcastle at night at 6 and 7.30 at Spartan Bull. So a busy week, isn't it? Yeah, and just so you know, people know, the New Pal game got changed today, so it's now Greenfield Central. So instead of New Pal. So we'll make up the game with Greenfield Central uh, on Saturday. On Saturday, and New Pal is actually going to go play Hamilton Southeastern on Saturday. Will so. still be JV and varsity? Still the same time. Just, okay. different, just different teams, same D time. Different, different uniforms. Huh? It'll be blue and yellow <laughs> instead of red and white and black. So. They both come from the West. Both coming from Hancock County. That's true. So. <laughs> This has really been some year, hasn't it? It's been a different one. <laughs> Let's hope we don't all have to right. experience it have for a the repeat. second made, year. Made you earn your money, buddy. That's all right. <laughs> it's all about the kids. So, time, about as I told somebody, time for me is irrelevant. It's just time is time. So. There's area girls basketball records for Rushville. It's 10 and 5. They won 54 to 47 at Seymour, home with Franklin County. Tuesday, Centerville is 1 and 7. Last three games have been postponed. Wednesday, they play Cambridge City. Union County is 10 and three. They won 49 to 28 over Morristown at Spartan Bull on Wednesday. Richmond, six and four, lost 45 to 19 to Pike at Marion Friday. Cambridge City is two and nine. They lost 46 to 36 to Randolph Southern. Wednesday, they'll be in action at a Centerville tourney. I'm not sure who they play. Franklin County is 5 and 10. They lost 55 to 36 to Perry Meridian. Tuesday at Richville. Here are the boys' scores. Cambridge City is 3 and 5. They lost 61 to 51 at Blue River. Wednesday plays in that Centerville tourney. Centerville is 2 and 5. They won 83 to 42 over Rising Sun. Wednesday plays Nice Town. No Centerville is the opposing team for, that would not be a tourney, it's a girls' tourney. Franklin County is four, at two and four. They lost at Morristown, 55 to 41, home Friday with Union County. Rushville is zero and seven, lost 61 to 34 to Rock Creek Academy, home with East Central on Friday. Richmond is two and four. They lost 51 to 32 to Lebanon at Newcastle Friday. Union County is two and five. They lost to Preble Shawnee, 65 to 60, home Tuesday with Seton Catholic. So the girls have um, strong teams coming up to meet. Uh, meet yeah, Rushville. You, know, you just got Rushville, East Central, Greens. Uh, and, gonna go play Batesville. And Union County. Union County strong. Yes, uh, yes. We'll see how Greenfield is. They're down a little bit from where they have been, but in the past they've been pretty solid. Uh, but I think our girls have gotten better. Yes. Uh, Saturday we played at North Decatur, had the opportunity to win, was in the mm -hmm. lead, but struggled to close it out and end up on the wrong side in overtime. Right. But, uh, had Four the ball at the end with overtime. 14. Just couldn't get, got the shot off, didn't go in, but we had a good shot at 14 and just made a questionable pass, I think, and just didn't get our hands on it. And then luckily it got tipped out by them and we got it back, but uh, just one of those things. As you say, they're improving, though. Oh, I think by far from where we started two years ago mm -hmm. to where we're at now, we're, we're, it's almost a night and day difference on what's going on on the court. And, uh, good, bad, or indifference, just a different philosophy with Coach Harder than we had with Coach Thompson. And 
I think our girls have picked up her system and are getting better game by game. So, Sam, what did you see in the game? I saw uh, they got down early mm -hmm. and didn't let that bother them. Came back and uh, I think they were down by 11 at one point and came back and took the lead up to seven. Um, and it was hard fought, kind of back and forth down the stretch and uh, end up uh, coming up short in overtime. But the thing I like, I see them communicating. Um, I think they're seeing the floor much better, and uh, they seem to be having fun on, on top That's of good. that. And I think all those all those things together uh, can make them successful. And a lot of scoring in that game, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. 64 to 60, I think, was the final. Uh, I remember the final score was 60-something. to It was up there, 60-54, I think, yeah, it was right. somewhere in there. So. Um, well, we struggled early, so mm -hmm. once we got rolling. Uh, no, I'm sure Coach would say we probably took some shots we probably didn't need to take at the wrong time and tried to force a few things. And you know, it's just six points is just two or three possessions throughout the game that can make a world of difference in in the outcome. So. They were being pressed most of the game and and probably had a few too many turnovers, but um, mm -hmm. they were able to handle the press as well. I thought uh, for the most part. So. And then uh, Coach Harder's thrown in a couple wrinkles too. He pressed a little bit. Uh, that's good to see. A year ago, they wouldn't have even been able to know what that was, probably. But, uh, <laughs> and, big difference. You know, North Decatur's got a nice little team. I think Greensburg beat them by nine, and, you know, Greensburg's pretty solid. And, mm -hmm. um, they played Rushville. They played Lawrenceburg. They played a lot of EIAC yeah, They've teams. not shied away from anybody, and uh, their number 40 might have been the best player on the floor mm -hmm. uh, by far. And thank God she fouled out towards the right. end. <laughs> they had, but, uh, we were looking out in the hallway, they had just uh, won sectional last year now they came in at two and seven they're now three and seven but but uh, even in a 2a sectional that's it, winning a sectional is not easy I guess what I'm trying to say no I and mean, if you look at their schedule who they play makes a difference on what your record is and you know you think back in times and I'll go back to when coach Hetty was here and we had the team was like four and forever and then we ended up winning a sectional, and because of our 16 losses, we're better than most of those teams' wins coming into that sectional. So, you know, maybe North Decatur's got a good enough schedule where their losses are better than some of the wins they might get. So, you can have a lot to be gained. And we, you know, why do we play some of the teams that we play on our schedules for both boys and girls? Because of the competition. Whether we win or lose, uh, makes you a better team. So, and maybe North Decatur's in that same boat with uh, their girls' team and who they're playing. So. Probably. Spartan boys' last game was impressive over McCutcheon. Yeah, I thought, you know, talking with their AD, Ryan, and, you know, I knew they were 4-0. and Of course, they had a couple of kids that didn't play, the Fantasy Kids brothers at IU on a full-ride scholarship that starts for the Hoosiers. And uh, he had a torn ACL two years ago and had a little bit of inflammation on the knee, so they've been holding, they were holding him out a little bit over break. And then, huh, unfortunately for them, they had a AAU mishap with one of their best players who was ranked, the number ninth player in the country as a sophomore, oh. not in just Indiana, but uh, if he's he's in a Gatorade or Powerade commercial with Zion Williamson, so uh, mm. pretty good little player. But uh, I think Dad got his fingers in the wrong spot, from what I heard, of taking a little under the table money and caught the kid up, so he's at a prep <laughs> school. So now that's what you hear from people from Lafayette talking to yeah. him. So, but they still were athletic. Uh, his, that kid's brother was the 24 kid. That kid's as good an athlete as we've seen. But once we got down and kind of took the lead, and you know we're down 17, 13 right before the half, and we hit two quick buckets, and then Josh steals the inbound pass, and Toby sticks it in and goes up 20 to 17. We went on a 25 to nothing run, so they didn't score there in the third quarter at all. Which they were 4 and 0 coming in. Yeah, they had, and we only held them. We held them to four points in the second quarter. All yeah, those free so throws. They uh, and they play good schedule. They're in the North Central Conference, which I had forgot they got in with, with Harrison. and So they're in there with Richmond and Marion and Newcastle and Indianapolis Coca Tech. And Coca they're, they got a good schedule. And they're a good basketball team. We just And, of course, they played without one of their better players, but, you know, that happens but, to us at times. Yeah. So. The Spartans' defense still held them to 28 points, which is far under their average. Well, it is. Uh, you know, Terry doesn't get too far <laughs> out there. True. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I think after being in the world and – coaching a long time that it's a different basketball style over here. I mean, we go to, to wherever where they're going to 
Kokomo or whatever. There's just a different brand of basketball played throughout the state. It's different in Indianapolis than it is down in the south. Mm -hmm. It's different in the north than it is where we're at. So our style frustrates. Uh, those teams. If you're if you're used to and they score a lot of points typically, and if you're used to getting up down the floor and scoring in the 70s, and you're coming here and it's a possession by possession game, and you miss a couple shots, it's like <laughs> six other possessions you might have made up in a normal game they play. So every possession for us is like a five possession ball game. So. Giving up a two points here might be ten in the other game, but uh, it makes a difference when you're not used to playing that style consistently. So, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, Kerry's been, and you can think of the guy, you know, Stacy does it at Greensburg, and Aaron does it at Batesville, and Disboro does it at East Central. When you can't, when you think you're better, not as good athletically, you make it as slow and as ugly as you can make it, and then you just <laughs> fight to the end. And not that it's ugly, but. You just take the air out of the ball and you do it a different way than people do. you are think used that's to. why some schools like to come and play us? Because for them, it's a learning experience for what they may see in a tournament sometimes. Well, I think so. And I think that's why we play schools we play. Because not everybody's going to play the style that we're going to play. And sometimes we're going to have to learn how to beat the press and get up and down the floor and block athletic kids out. Yeah, the and number one team in the state coming up here in a few weeks. Well, we'll see. At least they're coming to our place. That's year. right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll have better luck than we had last year going to their place. But we've but, had uh, success with We that. have. Talking, Eaton, talking just, about Lawrence North. Just Not just recently, but throughout the years when we played back with, we played with Spurlock and Munchell and Newman and that brunt, which we, we beat them just as much as they beat us. When, so. uh, Howard Renner was here. He, uh, when he was at Cathedral, they were just half a mile apart there. He, he, yeah, loved, he loved beating them. Yeah, he, he has no <laughs> love loss for a coach. So, yeah. <laughs> he, he wouldn't even say his name. He usually liked to wear his fish tie. Fish tie, tie yeah. So, well, but, you know, Kiefer's the only coach they've really ever had as the head coach. 47 years or 46 yes, yeah. years they've been in school. Yeah. But right. Kiefer was actually at my arch rival high school when I was in school. So, Oak Hill, Golden Eagles. Oh, so, yeah. but, uh, you know, they've and had a good program. That's Winning an afternoon show. game, too. On the yeah, Saturday. that's the afternoon because that's the Saturday of the girls' sectional mm -hmm. final game. So. We always try to play our game in the afternoon, so when our girls are in the sectional final, we can get done and the boys can go up there and still watch them play. So. Jack Kiefer is where, like 800, almost 800 victories? He's probably over that now, but oh, okay. I haven't looked for a while. But he's he's right been, up there at the top. He's been doing it for 50-some years, or close to 50 he came years. came with the so. school, I think. He, yeah. Right. Yeah. First one yeah. from there. and yeah. He had some good teams at Oak Hill while he was there as well. So. Yeah, That's he's been very successful. Yes, he has. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> girls middle school basketball starts this week. Yeah, middle school girls is getting ready to start. And as we talked about earlier while we were probably off air, it's just different because, you know, the girls' season to high school starts first and the boys are second and it's switched in the middle school. And, and there's three teams. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, I think uh, one, one white and two a, reds, it, I believe. There's a red and a red in both grade and one white. So Yes. Um, Seventh and eighth graders. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's just, and we talked in the future that the number of kids that are now trying out compared to what used to try out, not only in the girls but also in the boys, that maybe down the road we just go to one team, kind of like we used to do with the freshman team, and you kind of had a freshman A and a freshman B, and then you play the A game first, and then you play the second game, mm -hmm. or you play extra quarters or whatever it is to get those kids that don't get in the A game a chance to play. So maybe we don't keep as many, but we play as much time because we get more kids playing all the time. I don't know. But those are things we're going to have to discuss because the numbers are dwindling, not just in basketball, but in many sports of kids not coming out and the numbers are not going to, right now, not growing. And so, Do you think that, um, however, with the girls, if they continue to improve and have success at the high school level, that that could spark some interest in, in the elementary and, and middle school age yeah, kids? I, I think it all goes in cycles because this is the first time in all years, not, not only with girls, but we only had one boys team and the white team so we didn't have a full team to have two in the seventh grade which is the first for when i had 15 kids try out total which when i got here it would be 120 some kids trying out for boys basketball at seventh grade and then you know when april played and beth and shana and all those and andrea and you know whoever else was on those and mcqueen's and um we had quite a few girls playing and oh, i think yeah. if we win and it's just like everything else. It's like fans. If you win, they come. If you don't, they don't show up. It's kind of the same in the sport world. If you win, they get kids coming. And I think giving chance, get Michelle a chance to have some summertime where she can have some things with the kids, so the kids get to understand her at a younger grade. Then that'll help our numbers in the long run. You know, for the for the other sports, with basketball, you know, 
Rubles kind of had a struggle with softball because he didn't get a summer, and, and, and Stephanie with volleyball because she didn't get a summer, and, you know, we're trying to start new people, and it just makes it difficult when you're trying to do that. So hopefully we all get a good summer and we'll get some things, and the numbers will go back up. So. The red team is having an invitation. The red teams of boys are having an invitational Saturday at Spartan Arena. Yeah, they were supposed to have it earlier, and... Unfortunately, our kids were uh, traced out, and so since we weren't playing, we didn't want to bring the other three schools in. So we had the eighth grade tournament already, so this Saturday they're going to run a seventh grade tournament. may not be the same four teams, so it's going to be pretty busy because in the arena it's going to have the seventh right. grade going on, and uh, Bola, we're going to have the girls game with Greenfield, and then parking's going to be at premium, so I guess we <laughs> would ask all those middle school people to park on the west, east side of the bowl <laughs> and then come in the gym on the arena side so that the other sides can be save for the high school right. girls game at 11. So We better get there early, friend. <laughs> yeah, well, to there's no helipad for you to land your copter on, though. So. <laughs> what about tickets for the invitation? How is that handled? Is that parents only? Yeah, right now, assuming that we're going to stay red, it'll just be two tickets okay. per player, and same thing for the opponents coming in. So it could be a very small crowd this whole week. Just yeah, yeah. It's just where we're at. It's, you know, the crowds are great because it helps us financially, but it's also important that our kids get a chance to play and not have to do like spring sports did last year and sit out. So hopefully we'll get through and have a state tournament for the all the way through in the wintertime. We'll hope we didn't so. get that last year. Right. So, and that's unfortunate for our kids. So We had sectionals, but that was the end of it. That was basketball. the beginning of the end right then and there. So <laughs> that's right. We didn't even get through the selling of the tickets for the regional for the next round and and I know some people had started, and some of the guys that are ADs that were in the regional had to refund a lot of ticket money <laughs> uh, after that week once they decided they weren't going to have it. So right now, knock on wood, everything's moving forward. And I think a lot of our kids and our families around the state are excited that we've been able to stay and have sports. And well, we've learned to deal with it. Yeah, you'll see where it goes with the, with the vaccine coming out, what it might change again. And, you know, now they say there's a new strand that's morphed off. And, but that's going to be the same as no matter what other sure. virus you have, it's going to change. So, The long layoff for basketball, the Spartans played on Tuesday, and now they don't play until Friday. Does that take an edge off? I don't know if it takes an edge off, because they're going to come back today and practice just like it's a normal week. Okay. So sometimes have a, not too bad to have two or three days off. Mm -hmm. so. Would have been nice to have that Columbus North game. I was looking forward to that. You used to have some great games when Bill Stearman was coached down there. Well, it was kind of funny because, you know, we tried once we found out Columbus North wasn't coming we called 15 schools on Wednesday trying to get somebody to come and either they couldn't, they were quarantined, they had a game. <laughs> so we got it down to two teams that were left and one of them was Belmont and one was Fishers and talked to Fishers AD and they were kind of what interested but not really because they were playing Carmel on Saturday. Come Friday, Carmel's out, and they're looking for a game. <laughs> but by that time, our kids had already known they weren't coming in to practice, and Coach Brown was up seeing his mom, and it's not Winnemac, but whatever the little oh, burg that, that yeah. whatever the little burg that she lives in. So, <laughs> so that was out. On, but I just kind of thought that was a little ironic that they could have come and played us on Thursday. Thursday, and they would have got a game, man. But you just don't ever know. It's minute by minute, and, day by day. And you can understand their thinking too. Carmel, oh. Carmel's a big rivalry for them, and. Well, we had somebody who maybe wanted to play us in the middle of this week, but, you know, we got conference game on Friday and Newcastle on Saturday, and you, you don't necessarily want to throw another game in the middle of the week when you're trying to prepare for those two teams back-to-back. -back, so. so you receive calls from other athletic directors? Oh, there's somebody either calling or emailing everybody all the time looking for games. So. Yes. All over the state. Where it depends on where you want to drive. So. Spartans right now are in the lead in the South Central Conference at 2-0. and Greensburg is 1-0, so puts a little bit of extra importance to Friday night? Well, I think the last three to four years, you know, those are the two teams that's been at the top of the conference year in and year out. I don't know that any of the games we've played have been a, bat a blowout. You know, even two years ago when we went back to Greensburg was the weekend that Kerry's dad had passed away. And, you know, if you remember right, we played those two weekends without. Yes. And uh, that being two close ball games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, on, you know. Greensburg on the road and the Newcastle home in overtime and broke room. So I think it's good uh, we're going to Greensburg since the section will be there to give uh, the kids an opportunity to play 
to play there on that floor this year. It was much better had the sectional here, but but <laughs> um, I guess if you look for a positive, that uh, we'll have two games at least on that floor. Yeah, we'll play down there this week, and then obviously when we get ready for a sectional practice time, we won't get to go back and practice there because now if you play there, you don't get to <laughs> practice there. Uh, but it'll be good for us to be on the road. And, you know, we played at home quite a bit, and now we can go out and travel a little bit again. So, and uh, Newcastle coming down Saturday night—that's usually a fun one. Yeah, just too bad we can't be at full capacity because you know what that's like. It's just like the Union County game and the excitement and the atmosphere. And, you know, the kids are playing, whether it's girls basketball, boys basketball, swimming, you know, wrestling, whatever. It's it's nice to have that atmosphere in there. And unfortunately for everybody, we don't get to have that at full capabilities for all of our kids and all of our sports. So, But I'd rather have them play and not play at all. Exactly. Well, the Lenny Spartans and the Spartans both have a tough, tough week. Uh, each has two games. We'll know a lot more about the teams next week. Yeah, hopefully we'll come home with four wins from, or eight wins if you want to think of it in that way. So two for each team. Yes. So, and hopefully the wrestlers will go over Wednesday and put a good show on and um, work it like Mac would want him to. And, you know, that's his motto, hard work. And you never know what it's going to pay off down the road if you put your time in now. So. Well, we know the kids will be at 100% attempts, and hopefully they will win. Yeah, it'd be a good win. And they, they've actually won some matches that with short numbers, like I said. So. Yes. Uh, hopefully it will continue. So. Sure, they'll be dedicating the rest of the season to the coach. Well, Coach's sister got Never to come in and talk a little bit on Saturday to the kids, and, and a lot of people don't know that Max's mom had passed away right before his senior year and kind of spurred him a little bit, and he ended up finishing second in the state. It wasn't his ultimate goal, but he got second place. And But, you know, just that was the thing that drove him, drove him the rest of that season to continue on, and he's just got a passion for the sport of wrestling. Well, Brent, thanks. It's been tough, I know, coming and having to talk about tragedies, but uh, we appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having us. Thanks, everybody, for watching this edition of the Spartan Sports Report.